In December, South Africa became the first country to file a case against Israel at the International Court of Justice, or ICJ, alleging genocide against Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, where almost half of the population are children. Nearly 23,000 Palestinians have been killed since Israel began its military assault on Gaza after October 7th, the vast majority of them children and women. That's enough people to exceed the 20,000 capacity of the O2 Arena in London. Gaza has become a graveyard for children. In an 84-page document, South Africa has gone into exhaustive detail, outlining the precise ways in which it believes Israel has violated the Genocide Convention. Immediately, South Africa frames its case against Israel in the context of apartheid, an institutionalized regime of oppression and domination by one racial group over another, according to a definition by Amnesty International. The atrocities committed on and since October 7th were preceded by Israel's 75-year-long apartheid, its 56-year-long belligerent occupation of Palestinian territory, and its 16-year-long blockade of Gaza, the report says. Before a hearing of the case scheduled this week on January 11th and 12th, here are some of the key takeaways from the document. What is the Genocide Convention? On December 9, 1948, three years after the end of the Second World War, the United Nations approved a written international agreement known as the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, also known as the Genocide Convention. For the first time, genocide was now an international crime. As of April 2022, 153 states, including Palestine, South Africa and Israel, have ratified the Genocide Convention. This means signatories are obliged to prevent and to punish the crime of genocide, including by enacting relevant legislation and punishing perpetrators. But what do we mean when we talk about genocide? According to the UN, genocide is defined as acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial or religious group. In the last century alone, there have been numerous genocides. Referred to as the first of the 20th century, there was the Armenian Genocide. Then there was the Holocaust. Then there was the Rwandan Genocide, followed by the Bosnian Genocide. More recently, in 2014, ISIS committed genocide of the Yazidis, a religious minority group from Iraq, and China has been accused of the genocide of Uyghurs, the largest minority ethnic group in the northwestern province of Xinjiang. Since the start of the Ukraine war in 2022, Ukraine has also taken Russia to the ICJ for crimes of genocide. The term genocide was coined by Rafael Lemkin, a Polish Jewish lawyer whose parents were among 49 family members murdered by the Nazis during the Holocaust. Combining the Greek word for race or tribe, gino, with the Latin word for killing, side, Lemkin created one word to describe the Nazi's systematic murder of European Jews. Lemkin made a simple but profound argument that small countries who could not protect themselves against the force of larger countries who had arms at their disposal should be protected through international law. Now, Israel, a nation created on occupied land as a sanctuary for Jews who have historically faced anti-Semitism, pogroms and genocide for centuries, faces allegations of genocide. South Africa has meticulously documented 29 damning pages of factual and legally reinforced evidence of genocidal acts committed by Israel against the Palestinian people, which violate four categories of Article 2 of the Genocide Convention. The October 7th war, like all conflicts between Israel and Palestine, has been characterized as a war between equal powers, especially since Hamas killed around 1,200 Israelis, the majority of them civilians. But Israel's ongoing blockade of Gaza has meant that freedom of movement of people and goods has been entirely under Israeli control, igniting accusations of illegal collective punishment and Gaza being compared to an open-air prison. Established in June 1945, the International Court of Justice's job is to settle, in accordance with international law, legal disputes submitted to it by states and to give advisory opinions on legal questions referred to it by authorised UN groups and specialised agencies. The court is independent without political bias and it is composed of 15 elected judges. Remember, the ICJ is different to the International Criminal Court, or ICC. Both the ICJ and the ICC are located in The Hague, a city in the Netherlands. But the ICJ deals with state-to-state -state complaints. The ICC deals with individual criminal responsibility. It's worth noting Israel doesn't recognize the ICC's authority. 
It does, however, recognise the International Court of Justice's rulings, which are final and cannot be appealed. But the court has no power to enforce them. South Africa's landmark case is not the first time Israel has been referred to the ICJ. In 2004, the International Court ruled Israel's separation wall in the occupied West Bank was illegal. The ICJ ruled parts of the wall already erected should be dismantled, construction must stop immediately, and Israel should make reparations for any damage caused. Israel rejected the ruling. In November 2022, a UN panel voted to request an opinion from the ICJ on the legal ramifications of Israel's prolonged occupation, settlement, and annexation of Palestinian territory since 1967. South Africa's report breaks down Israel's crimes of genocide into eight different sections. One, killing Palestinians in Gaza. Israel has dropped unguided dumb bombs on Gaza and heavy bombs weighing up to 2,000 pounds, which have a predicted lethal radius of up to 360 meters. That's over a thousand feet, more than twice the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has described the Israeli Defense Force as the most moral army in the world. <laughs> שאין בהם אפילו טיפת מוסר אחת. צה"ל הוא הצבא המוסרי ביותר בעולם. But as the report documents extensively, Palestinians have been killed by Israeli airstrikes in their homes, in hospitals, schools, churches, mosques and shelters. The level of child mortality in Palestinian families has been so devastating that medics in Gaza have been forced to coin a new acronym. You know, there's an acronym in the in the Gaza Strip right now. You know, I, I'm a pediatric intensive care doctor. I see a lot of suffering in my career. There's an acronym that is unique to the Gaza Strip, and it's called it's WCNSF, Wounded Child, No Surviving Family. To add to the shocking number of deaths, over 311 doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers, including doctors and ambulance drivers, were killed on duty. At least 105 journalists have been killed the highest number in one conflict since the Committee to Protect Journalists began documenting journalists' deaths. <laughs> Two, causing serious bodily and mental harm to Palestinians. As well as pointing to the over 55,000 Palestinians who have been wounded, the majority of them women and children, the document also emphasizes how Palestinian children in Gaza suffered severe trauma before October 7th from previous attacks. Three, mass expulsion from homes and displacement of Palestinians in Gaza. Over 1.9 million Palestinians out of Gaza's population of 2.3 million people, approximately 85% of the population, have been forced from their homes. Despite being rejected by the US, senior far-right Israeli politicians, finance minister Bezalel Smotrich and national security minister Itamar ben gvir have openly encouraged the voluntary emigration of Gaza's population to other countries. As South Africa points out, there is precedent for forced mass displacement being considered a genocidal act, as was seen in the ICJ case on the Bosnian genocide. Around 60% of the entire housing stock in Gaza has been damaged or destroyed. 4. Deprivation of access to adequate food and water. When Israel declared a complete siege on Gaza on October 9th, allowing no electricity, food, water and fuel to enter the Strip, UN officials have since warned famine is around the corner in Gaza. Four out of five of the hungriest people anywhere in the world are in Gaza, the UN Secretary General said. Desperate for food, Palestinians are resorting to foraging, collecting spilled flour from aid distributions from the road. Some are even turning to hunting for cats. Five, deprivation of access to adequate medical care. The healthcare system in Gaza has all but collapsed, with 14 hospitals out of 36 facilities now only partially functional at the time of the document's release. Among the countless tragic stories that have emerged was one about five babies whose decomposing remains were discovered in Al Nasser Children's Hospital in northern Gaza after they were abandoned following frenzied forced evacuations by Israeli forces. Six, deprivation of access to adequate shelter clothes, hygiene and sanitation. Most of the 1.9 million displaced Palestinians in Gaza are seeking shelter in United Nations Relief and Works Agency facilities, the majority of them schools and tents. Despite the fact Israel has been given the coordinates of all UN facilities, these shelters 
have been targeted by Israeli airstrikes, killing hundreds of Palestinian men, women and children. The people of Gaza are being told to move like human pinballs, ricocheting between ever smaller slivers of the south without any of the basics for survival. But nowhere in Gaza is safe. Seven, the destruction of the life of the Palestinian people in Gaza. In reports like these, the dead become invisible, enveloped by the apathy of statistics. But in its report, South Africa named several of Gaza's local legends killed since October 7th, including pastry chef Masoud Mohammed Al Qatati, known as Abu Shadi, whose reputation for giving kanafa to customers for free earned him the nickname of Father of the Poor. There's also 84 year old Ilham Farah, an accordionist and music teacher known as Mother Orange to generations of Palestinian music students because of her vibrant red hair, who was shot dead by an Israeli sniper outside the Holy Family Church in Gaza City. Israel is not just destroying the official memory and records of Palestinians in Gaza through its destruction of Gaza's archives and historic landmarks, including the Great Omari Mosque and the 1,600-year-old church of St. Porphyrius. It is obliterating Palestinian personal lives and private memories, histories and futures through bombing and bulldozing graveyards. Eight. Israel is imposing measures intended to prevent Palestinian births. Almost 6,000 of approximately 52,000 pregnant Palestinian women in Gaza are giving birth each month in unsafe conditions, in shelters, in their homes, in the streets amid rubble, or in overwhelmed healthcare facilities, often with no clean water. Newborns are also dying from preventable diseases. Officially, Israel claims its aim in Gaza is to wipe Hamas off the face of the earth. But South Africa argues Israel's conduct against Palestinians in Gaza and its clear, repeated dehumanizing statements by Israeli government and military officials has demonstrated clear intent for genocide. It's a thorny legal issue trying to pinpoint special intent to commit genocide or dollar specialis. But South Africa provides eight pages of examples of expressions of genocidal intent starting with Benjamin Netanyahu himself. In a letter to Israeli soldiers and officers also published on X, formerly Twitter, on November 3rd, Netanyahu wrote, This is the war between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. We will not let up on our mission until the light overcomes the darkness. The good will defeat the extreme evil that threatens us and the entire world. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. this is then followed by three pages of quotes from UN experts who have repeatedly warned since at least mid-October that the Palestinian people are at grave risk of genocide by Israel. South Africa have extensively cross-referenced other high-profile genocide cases submitted to the ICJ. The courts considers a civilian population to be extremely vulnerable where the military operations have resulted in numerous civilian deaths and injuries and have caused significant material damages, including the destruction of buildings and infrastructure, and where attacks are ongoing and are creating increasingly difficult living conditions for the civilian population. It sounds exactly like what is happening in Gaza, but these are quotes from documents the Ukraine filed at the ICJ against Russia in February last year. A month later, after a fast-track procedure, the ICJ ordered provisional measures against Russia, which they rejected. Remember, more Palestinians have been killed in the space of three months than the number of Ukrainians killed since the start of the Ukraine versus Russia war in 2022. The systematic stripping of human rights, dehumanizing narratives and rhetoric, methodical planning, mass killing, mass displacement, mass fear, overwhelming levels of brutality, combined with the physical destruction of the home of the targeted population in every sense and on every level. 
These words sound as though they were written about Gaza. They're actually quotes from proceedings the West African nation of the Gambia initiated against Myanmar in 2019 against its deadly crackdown on Rohingya Muslims. The ICJ unanimously accepted the Gambia's request for provisional measures in December 2020 and issued a provisional order to Myanmar to end its genocidal acts. In fact, the governments of Canada, Denmark, France, Germany and the Netherlands and the UK signed a joint declaration of intervention on November 15th last year in support of Gambia's case. The UK have faced accusations of double standards after they suggested lowering the threshold for genocide to include serious bodily or mental harm of children in the intervention document for Myanmar, but resisted calling for a ceasefire early on even as thousands of Palestinian children were killed in Israeli airstrikes. In page 81 of the document, South Africa calls on Israel to immediately suspend its military operations in and against Gaza. It also calls on Israel to take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of evidence related to allegations of acts within the scope of Article 2 of the Genocide Convention. If the ICJ rules in favour of South Africa's case, they can only announce provisional measures. Benjamin Netanyahu slammed South Africa's allegations of genocide, calling it mendacious pontificating and hot air, lies and vanity. Israeli spokesperson Elon Levy confirmed Israel will fight the case at the ICJ. The state of Israel will appear before the International Court of Justice at The Hague to dispel South Africa's absurd blood libel. International law experts say the proceedings could cement claims of genocide against Israel and that it could lead to sanctions against it and diplomatic isolation. Article 3 of the Genocide Convention prohibits and punishes conspiracy to commit genocide direct and public incitement. If the ICJ rules in favour of South Africa, it could mean states like the UK and the US who did not stop Israel and instead lent its support by supplying munitions could face prosecution. Whether Israel itself will face prosecution by the ICJ, only time will tell.